Today is the 24th of April, and I'm going to continue on with a, a few mushrooms here. And I've gone into fairly, fairly good detail on the artist, no, no, on the birch polypore. And remember, and I talked about these yesterday. And you can tell, I'm going to go into the artist conch. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go into the artist conch today, and you can see the difference. There is no real likeness of these two at all. This is a birch polypore. This is the artist conch. And the artist conch, um, they will grow on birch. Is where I find them mostly is on uh, birch. But um, a lot of times I've seen them on, on maples as well. And the trees are well dying or dead or rotting on the trees that I've seen them on. And I broke this open just because it's all cracked here. I broke it open and I found a little grub inside there. And I don't know if you can see it, there's one there too. And I don't know what did that. I'm assuming some sort of moth, but I'm going to research that and see if I can figure it out. Because why I broke it open is I see these holes scattered throughout this, this top layer of the artist conch. And I wanted to see what was inside and what did it. And I found out that it is a little grub inside there. And I don't know what it is. So I'll research and I'll get back to you. But a uh, an artist conch is just that. It is a conch, which means it's a hard fungus. Um, it's usually a dry, a dry fungus. And when you pick it midsummer-ish, the underside of this will be very soft and plush and even just picking it or holding it like that it will scar it and that fingerprint or that handprint or that scratch will be there forever and ever and this is an example of one that when I was walking with our granddaughter on the 3rd of November 2021 we picked a couple of these and to to remember the date I um, scratched our names in it and the date so we can keep that and as you can see that it was marred either during the process of this or during the process of carrying it back or even harvesting it from the tree. And this is the one Rosie did. And if you turn this over, excuse my mess, I'm at my art table here. This is an example of what the back side looks like, and it could be lighter in color. And these cracks, I know... I know I did these cracks as I was trying to push it from the tree, pull it from the tree. So basically you want to bring yourself a chisel or something you can cut down alongside that so you're not um, cracking it like I did. And here's another example. And again, these are, yeah, they're still scratchable, but you might as well use your finger as a sander at this point and uh, prepare these for painting instead of scratching because they won't scar once they're dry. And there's the back side. It's kind of a funky looking ugly one there. And here is another example. And I will turn it over and you can see. Again, that was damaged. And it's kind of wrinkly looking. And supposedly you can count these lines and see how old the mushroom is. But I don't know the valid validity of that. Something that I haven't seen for myself or tried for myself so and these can grow up to like 50 years old and they'll keep growing year after year after year until um it becomes damaged or for some reason it dies back or or somebody collects them because i remember my grandmother had one that's that thing must have been at least 18 inches wide, at least, maybe even closer to 20 to 24 inches. And she used to do art on them. That's how I know what an art conch is, artist conch is, because my grandmother used to do art on hers. And uh, my mother used to collect them for her. So I don't know what else I know about the artist conch. Um, I do know that the outer edge is the youngest layer so that's the most the area that people tend to harvest for medicinal value and and though it's considered not edible they say it's not edible because it's not palatable and it's hard it's woody it's it's just not a good texture 
Um, but you can take this outer area, outer layer, and you can break it into pieces and you can make a tea out of it, much like I told you about the, um, the birch polypore. And I, as a general rule, I do a one to four ratio, one part mushroom, one to four parts water. But most people, from what I've read, um, they do four, one part mushroom to five parts water, but pretty much for me, right across, right straight across the board, unless there's a vast difference between mushrooms, and I just stick with the one to four ratio. And uh, there are people out there that swear that this is an anti-tumor, anti-cancer um, remedy, and, and I don't know that. I'm not one to 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 uh, go that route as far as medicinal value goes. Um, I tend to go for nutrients and I tend to go for anti-inflammatory or anti-pain type mushrooms um, but or, or, or an immune booster as well. Um, and that's what the artist conch is. The artist conch is an antioxidant and it's an immune booster. And some people claim that it has a good anti-cancer properties and but I, do, I don't go that route um, when you find these on trees and you can find them on uh, hardwood mostly but you can also find them once in a while on a uh, on a softwood or a conifer if you're used to that terminology more than I am um, <coughs> excuse me and uh, what these do is these spores find their way into on the bark of a tree and they find a weak spot or an open spot then they just get in there and they just start pushing their way through and they and they and they rot the tree so when you find these you're going to find the tree is is pretty much dead or dying or in the process of decomposing rapidly uh, because they do uh, quite a bit of damage once they get a hold of them um, i think that is all i know about the artist conch um, it's very bitter. I do know that. I've tasted it and it's extremely bitter. So you can relate it to a lot, a lot to the polypore in that way.